we're ready to set up our animation rig just as before. I'll create a new locator and in its shape node I'll increase its local scale attributes x, y, and z to a value of about 20 centimeters. And then I'm going to constrain both the shattered group node and the unshattered model to the locator. In the outliner I'll select the locator first and then control click on that group node. Go to the animation menu set and choose constrain parent. Likewise for the high level of detail object I can turn its visibility on. Select the locator. Control select the high LOD model and go to constrain parent. Now I can select the locator and move it. I'll move it up about a meter above the ground, 100 units or so. Rotate it in some interesting way. Then I'm ready to drop it onto the ground. Let's create a ground plane. Create polygon primitives plane. Drag that out onto the grid. Set its translate x, y, and z attributes to zero. And in the inputs, I'll just round out its width and height to 100 units. While I'm at it, I'll delete its history. Edit, delete by type, history. Back to the locator, I'll select it and use the move tool to keyframe its position. With the locator selected and the timeline on frame one, I'll right click on translate Y and choose keys selected. I'll go forward about 12 frames, move the locator down, check it in my front or side view by tapping the space bar. Make sure that the geometry is almost but not quite touching the floor. And then right click and key selected once again. As before, we can go into the graph editor, window, animation editors, graph editor. Select translate Y and press the F key to frame the curve. Then grab the move tool. Left mouse select the keyframe. Left mouse drag to select the handle. And middle mouse drag to move the handle. Now the object is accelerating over time. All right, so now that's another great point at which we can save. And now we're ready to add the dynamics. I'll select all the fragments by dragging over them in the outliner. And I'll also select the ground plane by control clicking on that. Then in the dynamics menu set, I'll choose soft rigid bodies, create passive rigid body. I won't see any change if I press play in the viewport. I need to animate the active attribute of the fragment's rigid body nodes. I'll select all those fragments, scroll down in the channel box, and on frame one, I'll key the active state off. Right click, key selected. So that I don't have any unexpected problems, I'll just turn off the evaluation of rigid bodies while I'm keyframing this active state. Turn that off. Scroll down to frame 12, set active on, type in a 1, right click, key selected, and rewind, and then I'll turn evaluation back on again. Modify evaluate nodes, rigid bodies. When I press play, I will see something, but you'll notice that it sort of hesitates at that point of impact, as if Maya has actually crashed or locked up, but in fact it hasn't. It just takes a really long time to calculate those few frames. And as soon as that's done, then all the pieces fly apart. Good. We're going to add gravity, and then we can fine tune some of the solver attributes. The fragments are still selected. I'll go into Fields, Gravity, Options. Make sure that it's set to 980 because this scene has been modeled at real-world scale. Click Create. I can just move that gravity node off to the side. I'll turn my grid off too, if that's distracting. And press Play. 
and wait for that to calculate. If waiting is problematic, then you can always turn stand-ins to cube, and that way the scene will run more quickly. Another thing that I can do to help performance is to change the solver settings. In the Dynamics menu set, I can go into Solvers, Rigid Body Solver Attributes. And these two attributes at the very top are very important. The step size is the time base accuracy. Lower values will be more accurate and take longer to calculate. Higher values will be less accurate but calculate more quickly. I'll set that step size up to a value of 0.5 which is quite a lot more than the default. I'll give myself some more time to play with, 96 frames in the timeline, and then press play. With a step size of 0.5, we'll get a different result. It's a little bit difficult to see here. We'd have to do a play blast to really appreciate the difference. But it is actually calculating a little bit faster because I've increased the step size. Likewise, the collision tolerance controls the spatial accuracy. A greater value will be less accurate but calculate more quickly. Another interesting setting that you can play around with is found under Solvers, Edit Oversampling, or Cache Settings. And Oversamples is the number of times that Maya calculates each step of the animation. For each step we can set the oversamples to two or maybe even three in order to make it calculate each step more than once and return the most accurate result. Of course, that's going to make the simulation run more slowly, too. I'll go ahead and create a radial field just as we did before. Fields, radial, bring that up and over. I can animate its magnitude. It still has the attenuation and max distance turned off because I changed them before and that got saved in my preferences. The magnitude on frame 1 should be 0. Right click and key selected. I'll turn the evaluation of the rigid bodies off while I'm working with keyframing. Go forward to frame 12. Set the radial field magnitude to let's say 10. Right click, key selected. A couple frames later, once again, magnitude of zero, right click, key selected. My graph editor is still open down here. Here's the magnitude curve. Press the F key to frame that. Select all those keys and set them to step tangents. Rewind, re enable rigid bodies. And let's do a play blast to see what we get. Window play blast. Here's the play blast showing that we probably need more magnitude on that radial field. Go back to the graph editor, select that keyframe, and I'll increase the value to let's say 50. And do another play blast. And you can see here now that we've got too much energy coming from the field. So the magnitude of 50 was too great this time. So once again, back in the graph editor, I'll set that equal to somewhere in the middle, maybe a value of 30. And here's what we got with a value of 30. Now we could spend some time adjusting the rigid body attributes, such as bounciness and friction. Once we've got what we like, once again, we'll bake the simulation. I'll select all the fragments, edit keys, bake simulation, and it'll bake the entire timeline. When the bake is finished, we'll delete all rigid bodies. Edit and delete all by type rigid bodies, and also edit delete all by type static channels, and save to a new file name. That way we can keep the baked and unbaked versions. Finally, all we have to do is animate the visibility. The high level of detail object should be on on frame 1. So on frame 1, I'll set that visibility on 
and right click in key selected. The solid shatter group on frame one should have a visibility of zero or off. Right click in key selected. Scrub forward to frame 13. And then the group, we'll turn that one on. Right click and key selected. And the high LOD model will make invisible frame 13. And now we've got a shattering object that's ready to be rendered. You could do a play blast just as before, save that to disk, or you could do a batch render. And that concludes this exercise in Maya Dynamics Breakage. I hope you've enjoyed it and look for more tutorials at digitalartsguild.com.